You know, great win. Um, you know, those. Uh, I think getting over those so-called uh, fourth quarter blues was a uh, was a big deal for us. Uh, I think this program, uh, you know, was a big win for the entire program, not just uh, you know, not just for this particular season. I think everyone feels good looking forward, and uh, hopefully we can uh, string a couple wins together here and uh, and get to a bowl game. Here you come, highly rated junior college quarterback to the school, and presumably to take over the program and be the starter. And up until last the other night, I, I assume it's been a challenge for you. I mean, yeah, it's been different. Um, it's been a while since I've. Uh, you know, seeing the backup role, uh, but you know, just uh, preparing each game, you know, as if I'm going to get in. Um, you know, I sit there with with Chucky, and uh, you know, we watch film together. Uh, you know, trying to prepare. Um, so I think that helped a lot with me coming in, just uh, just being ready as if you know I was the guy from the get go. Uh, so it's you know it's been different, assuming that backup role, but. Uh, um, you know, it. Uh, I've gotten used to it, and um, you know, helping. Uh, you know, just do my part in the team. Talk about that last uh, the game-winning drive, because every bounce seemed to go your with a fumble, and then the the option pitch that Smith ran around forever. Yeah, I said after the game um, that it. Uh, you know, it was this this program's night. I mean, everything seemed to be going our way in the second half. And uh, I think those two plays, you know, epitomize that. You know, Term and I have a, a little miscommunication. The ball's rumbling around. Not only do we recover it, but we end up, you know, gaining eight yards on the play. So, um, you know, it was this program's time to uh, to get over that hump. And, uh, you know, those plays just, you know, show that it, that it was on night. And even your two touchdown passes, you fit it in between the two defenders to Stanley and then the, the one to Chuck was just a little underthrown of it. Yeah, um, you know, when you have great players on the outside, um, you know, you just try to give them a chance, uh, and that's all I tried to do. Uh, a little underthrown, no doubt, but, uh, you know, Chuck being the player he is, you know, made me look good on it. So, uh, you know, definitely with players like that, you just want to give them a shot. What was your thoughts at halftime? You're down 28-7, and Chucky, you know, out of the game? Um, I think first, all of, you know, even throughout, you know, talking strategy and whatnot, we took a moment and uh, and prayed for Chucky and his family. Um, we all felt for him. You know, it was a scary moment. Um, you know, that goes beyond just football. Um, but in terms of the game, uh, you know, the coaches, you know, sat us down and and told us, you know, there's a whole other half, and that you know we'd been through this before. You know, two years ago, obviously I wasn't here, but uh, you know they had they came roaring back in the second half. So I think guys felt good about that. Uh, felt good about the strategy we had in place, even though it wasn't, you know, working as well as we had thought. We felt good about it. Uh, so I think we came out confident in the second half, despite the score, and, uh, you know, really played with some emotion. Did the coaches change, make any changes in the way they call the plays when you're in the game instead of him? Um, you know, well, obviously I'm not as mobile as Chucky. Uh, I think uh, everyone can see that. Um, so there's definitely a little more drop back passing. Um, you know, some of that had to do with the score as well. You know, we kind of had to air the ball out to get back in the game. Uh, so, yeah, so there was a little bit of change. Um, you know, as you saw, we definitely still ran, uh, ran some of the zone option, uh, ran some of the zone option scheme, um, you know, the midline and whatnot. So, uh, you know, not as much change uh, as I would have actually thought, but, um, you know, worked out. You know, Coach Baldwin obviously is, uh, is the man. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> Yeah, um, I was. It kind of surprised me that that so many people were surprised uh, because my JC film does show that I can run the ball, um, but I think uh, you know that just kind of gotten forgotten. So uh, so yeah, so I think it caught Hawaii off guard as well too, um, and it ended up benefiting us. How about that uh, play where you almost scored your helicopter? What was going through your mind as you're? Um, you know, initially. When I first jumped, I thought for sure I was getting in. I thought there was no way. And all of a sudden, you know, two guys kind of give it to me a little bit. Um, uh, spinning around, um, then it was just making sure I held on to the ball. Uh, didn't want to uh, didn't want to give it up, especially when you have a back like turn back there. I mean, if you're that close, 
you know, we got all the faith in the world that Turbin's going to get it in. So, you know, felt really good about it. Uh, and looking back on it, you know, it was, a, it was a fun play. How does this game stack up to all the games in your career, high school, JC, and now here? Um, I think this was probably the best game um, just because of the emotion that was on the sideline. You saw the team grab the momentum, and we just kind of fed off each other. You know, offense feeding off defense, you know, special teams feeding off the offense. I mean, it was just, it went all around. We, we really came together on the sideline. Everyone was into it. Um, and I think that alone uh, made this game really special. You, saw, you, saw, you watched what happened with the offensive line in the first half. What, what changed? <clears throat> um, you know, I think it was just their mentality. Um, I don't think they didn't change anything scheme-wise. Uh, didn't s switch our protections around any. Um, it was just, I think the, everyone got caught up in the emotion, including them, and uh, you know they played great. It was, uh, it was. I had all the confidence in the world in them. You dropping back, I never, uh, never second guessed them one bit. Uh, I don't know how much to talk about before I came out, but how much? Do you, do you, you must have been then got enough reps or get enough reps in practice. Then they must spread that out enough that you're ready to go at any time. That yeah, the coaches that. do a great job of uh, of getting all um, you know second players, uh, second team players, uh, you know, a chance to get reps, um, including going against you know second team offense players, going against you know first team defense players, um, which I get a lot in practice. So it really helps. You feel when you're going into a game at any moment, you feel prepared and uh, and ready to go and. Uh, they do a great job of preparing you to, uh, you know, preparing you like you are going to be the guy. So I felt really good going into it. Felt confident. Um, never really got, uh, never even really got nervous. It was, uh, it was a great experience. Do you, do you chart the game? Are you right there with the play calling going on? How does that work when you're not in? Yeah, I. Uh, so I end up standing, you know, somewhere relatively close to Coach Baldwin, watching the calls, um, and then watching the safeties or you know whatever specific play it is watching the key uh, to not only help myself but help Chucky as well when he comes off the field, you know, the depths, the safety, and, and uh, you know, all that good stuff. So just, you know, that keeping you in the game, you know, when I went in, I felt like I knew exactly, you know, what was happening. I, I didn't have to, to relearn it. Thoughts on San Jose this week? I know we haven't touched on that yet. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's a team that's really close to my home. Um, you know, actually uh, – Met some of the coaches during my recruiting uh, period uh, from JC, so uh, it'll be a fun game and it'll be a, a big time game for this program. Did you say after the game? I you said I was surprised that I wasn't nervous. Yeah, yeah. I kept uh, you know I kept thinking I was going to get nervous. You know, it's going to come, but you know the guys kept coming up to me and talking to me and talking to me, and it, it just I never got a chance to get nervous. Um, and uh, you know it was great, even in the fourth quarter. You know, final drive, you know, thinking, okay, maybe I'll get a little bit of butterflies, which, uh, you know, isn't a bad thing, um, but it just never came. It was, uh, it, 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 I mean, it was just fun. It was, uh, it was, it was a great time. So do you think you might get them this week knowing you're going to start? <laughs> um, I probably will. I mean, I think everyone gets a little pregame jitters, uh, you know, especially with, you know, a little more expectations, um, but, uh, but it's going to be a fun game regardless. Is it fair to say that um, it's probably been a, a full calendar year since you've started a football game? Yeah, um, it it has. So it's been it's it's been a while, but uh, I'm not too worried about it. Um, just like uh, you had said before, we get a you know we get a lot of the reps in practice, and you know I feel uh, I feel ready to go. A number of those throws you made against Hawaii. The one that jumps out in my mind is one to Morrison. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're throwing, you know, into coverage a lot, which requires a lot of confidence from you. Is that something you've developed over your career in junior college and, and your play here, where you feel confident that you can, you know, sneak the ball into tight situations? Yeah, it, you know, my first year in junior college, through high school, and my first year in junior college, I never really had that strong an arm, um, so I always had to rely on anticipation. And then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, my sophomore year of JC ball, my arms started developing. And then coming here, the coaches just pushed that further and further. And, uh, you know, that gives me a lot of confidence to make those type of throws. I always feel like I can fit it in there. And, uh, you know, it showed in the game, and, and, you know, we came out on top with it. 
San Jose is able to pick Moniz off, I think, three three times in that game. Talk about their secondary. You know, it's going to be a challenge. Um, you know, every every conference game is a challenge. But I think, like I said earlier, with the with the athletes we have on the outside, you know, I have all the confidence in the world in them. Um, you know, I'm going to give them chances just like I did, you know, Saturday night. And, uh, you know, I think we all believe that uh, they're going to make those plays for us. Well, uh, first of all, his injury, the mechanism of his injury uh, when he got hit, uh, he had a rapid flexion of his neck. So with his neck bending forward quickly, uh, put certain structures at risk. The ligaments on the back side of your spinal column uh, tend to get sprained pretty easily. The muscles back there also get uh, strained. The main concern when he was down on the field was to make sure that he was still able to move his extremities. Uh, Chucky the whole time was able to talk to him. He didn't have any type of closed head injury of any kind. He was aware of what was going on. Uh, as we further evaluated him and we uh, were able to, to gather the information that he had tenderness in his spine, he very simply follow, uh, fell into a protocol that we follow with how we manage spine injured athletes. So at that point, the, the medical decision making became pretty simple for me. Uh, we would have to transport him off the field on a backboard and then uh, just do further assessment as time went on. He was able to move his extremities uh, the whole time. But with the tenderness that he had, we uh, decided to evacuate him off the field. The, um, the studies that were obtained at the hospital, uh, from my understanding, I haven't seen them yet. I've uh, tech, The uh, disc should be on its way uh, to Logan right now. Um, I think those guys arrived just a little bit ago. Uh, and I was looking for them to find the, the disc that has the MRI and the CAT scan on it. From my understanding, there was no evidence of a fracture or um, anything with his um, his spine. So at this point, it's more of a soft tin, uh, tissue injury, and uh, there's uh, some nerve involvement. I think the best way to describe it is a stinger, but it's a spinal stinger. It's not the typical stinger that you get down your down your arm. It's a little more complicated than that. And uh, he continues to improve. He was doing a lot better yesterday, moving around. He's very sore, as, as you'd expect him to be. But he's uh, definitely improving. So what's your prognosis? Can he play again this year? Uh, right now, it's probably still a little bit early. Without having seen, uh, seen him since he, he's returned from Hawaii, I expect him to be able to. Uh, but usually the first four, 24 to 48 hours, you get, a, you get a really good idea of how quickly these things move. Uh, with the reports I got yesterday, I would expect that he would be able to. Um, we'll just see uh, how he does with it, obviously, make sure that he's able to protect himself and that uh, he's confident in playing. When you said he fell into a protocol, what do you mean? We have a pretty standard, straightforward protocol that the way that you assess traumatic uh, injuries, as I go out onto the field, I have a protocol running through my mind. Um, and within the first five seconds, I knew that his airway, his breathing were fine. I grabbed his wrist. His circulation was fine. Uh, all emergency department doctors or all of us that, that are involved in sports medicine, we have a few things that that we follow with people that, that go down in a collision, uh, such as he had. And within the, again, first five to ten seconds, I knew that his, his airways, breathing, circulation were fine, and that I could tell within the first uh, few seconds that mentally he knew what was going on. He was, he was concerned because of how he was feeling, but he knew where he was and he knew what was happening. So that's when I talk about protocol, there's a pre-hospital care for spinal cord uh, injured athletes that uh, has been around for a few years. And if you notice any of the guys, uh, if any of you saw the game yesterday, uh, I didn't see exactly how the medical staff handled the defensive back for the Saints, but I'm confident they follow the same protocol that I do. So. There was no evidence of a concussion? No. No. Not at the time that I saw him, so. Anything else, Dr. So then biggest concern, the thing for him then is you evaluate it as far as how how he feels to lift his arms, move around, uh, that kind of stuff to be able to play again. It's kind of really his 
feeling of how he feels at this point then, if you look at things that he doesn't have fractures and things? Basically, what we put him through is a milestone progression, is that we put him through tasks that are safe, and as he accomplishes those tasks, then we subject him to tougher tasks. And as he's able to protect himself and his strength is good, um, if there is no medical evidence for us to keep him from playing, then, then I allow him to go back to play. So. Have you seen him since? I have. I, from what I understand, they just got back. Just well, Yeah, right as I was coming in, I was in my clinic this morning, so I haven't had a chance to see him, but I, I'll see him sometime today. So. Anything else? Okay. Uh, Tremendous victory, obviously. Um, uh, the way it went uh, to be able to finish a game was big. Uh, the kids would be able to make plays. It's uh, definitely a true statement game in a way. When I say that, it's a statement game of what has to be done to win football games from our beliefs, the uh, way we preach to the kids day in and day out. Players win games. Players make plays. And uh, that took place for us in the fourth quarter. They found a way to be able to win. Uh, you know, halftime didn't look so good. Uh, again, it's uh, I think we took step forward, steps forward, being able to finish a game, being able to continue to play in the third and the fourth quarter, and I think we took steps forward with some uh, young men in the program and in a positive way from a, a leadership standpoint. Uh, I think we finally have got to the point to where players are uh, calling out other players and uh, any team that has – any chance to take the next step or become a good football team or uh, an opportunity to consistently win football games, have players that will challenge players. And that definitely took place in this game. It's taken place before, but I think it took place uh, even more so in this game. I saw it taking place in the last week of practice. Does that carry over the rest of the season to make a difference? Time will tell. But uh, uh, you, you got to, you, if you will, and it's yeah, it's a little harsh maybe, um, but, uh, you know, you got to you got to weed out the weak links um, as you move forward. And I don't think there's a lot of that. And sometimes it's the young man's fault. Sometimes it's not his fault. But uh, you got to play at a high level to be able to consistently move on as a program. And you have to put yourself in a position as coaches to to challenge young men to be at their best. And I'm not saying they'll have to be all conference, but they have to be at their best. You have to challenge coaches to be at their best and players have to p challenge players to be at their best. And uh it was, it was encouraging to see a few things that took place in that game as we move forward. It was also encouraging to see a young man like Adam come off the bench. Obviously, he's preparing the right way. When uh, opportunity knocked, he was prepared for it, and I think that shows maturity in a program. It shows maturity in Adam, and uh, you know you talk about it all the time, but uh, you know, you're one snap away, you're one snap away, all the cliches the coaches use, but uh, he, was, uh, he was ready to go, and hopefully that's contagious. Uh, throughout the program when those opportunities present themselves. Alfred Bowden was in that same spot this last game. Uh, you know, Alfred went. Uh, Alfred had to go in and play every snap when uh, Walter got hurt and it was a critical part of the game. He came in and did a nice job. So uh, that was that was good to see also in that situation. So uh, tremendous victory. Uh, great for the kids. It was a great locker room. Uh, there was some great individual performances that took place. Uh, if you sit back and, and you look at it, I thought McCade Brady was outstanding at 13 tackles, played well, uh, You know, had an opportunity to make a big play in the first half, couldn't quite make that play on the pick in the end zone. would like to have had that one, but uh, to play at 13 tackles and play the way he did is good. Boje was uh, another defensive player of the game for us. He, uh, he had his best game by far. And, you know, offensively, I thought the offensive line protected well. It was tough sledding in the run game in there. You know, Robert was able to break one out. At the end of the day, the numbers in the run game were, were pretty good uh, against a very physical front. But, uh, you know, consistency, consistency, consistency. That uh, was tale of two halves, and you don't win a lot of football games uh, being down the way we were and then having to come back. And uh, we, have to, we have to find a way to be able to consistent. But uh, tremendous victory uh, for, for us to be able to go there on the road against a very good physical, physical football game. You know, I talked to Greg uh, at the time when Chucky was uh, down. Uh, he came out. We talked for just a minute, and you know, at that point, for for uh, the head coach for the opposing side to and myself to be able to look at each other and say, "Boy, this is a physical football game." I know they ended up having a lot of number of injuries, and that's not always a physical football game, but it was a physical, physical football game. Uh, and I think we handled that part of it well, which is encouraging. Football is a physical game, and if you're going to play against Hawaii, uh, you better be ready to play physical. And I thought we did play physical, so. What impressed you the most about Adam coming off the bench and doing what he did? Uh, you know, probably what it, 
uh, I'm, I'm not surprised that, that Adam came off the bench and played well, first of all. That doesn't surprise me. So um, probably what surprised me, and it's not really Adam, it's, it was our ability to get the ball down the field and make plays. And, uh, you know, Adam gave him the opportunity to make the plays, and the kids made the plays. So that was encouraging. But I thought Adam's composure was good. You know, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't say much to those kids. And, you know, I'm probably not the best guy in America with uh, as emotional as I am to sit down and, uh, communicate with the quarterback in that spot. I'm a little better with a linebacker, a defensive tackle at that point than I am a quarterback. But uh, he was composed. I slapped him on the on the head and said, you know, go get it, kid. And he did. And he uh, he rolled through it. And I thought he handled the situation very well. And obviously he was prepared. So uh, I was not surprised by the way that Adam played. He we, we knew he was a good player when we recruited him. I am very happy with the way he handled it, like I said, after the game. What he's handled since he walked on campus, uh, that, is a credit to a young man. Uh, the way he's handled that situation is, is tremendous on and off the field. Uh, that's not easy, and he's done a great job. One of your, one of your, on, one of your on-air comments at halftime was how much the offensive line was being dominated. Yeah. What, what exactly changed? Why did it change? What, what happened? Uh, run game. You know, I think we were able to get a few creases in the run. Nothing changed. You know, I don't. They're a physical front. Um, I thought, you know, the, the positive side of it was when we were, when we did have time to be able to throw the football, I thought we pass protected better. Uh, but I don't think there was anything magical that really changed. I don't think we blocked overly uh, a whole bunch better. I think we found some creases in the run game and did a nice job and got on some people. And, you know, I felt the same thing about the, the defensive line, too, and I said it at halftime also that I don't think we were getting a pass rush. Uh, the positive when I came back and I evaluate every position very, very closely when we go through is it wasn't an effort issue. You know, I had my questions on the defensive front as we went through the first half to see exactly, you know, why. Because I felt like we had a scheme that was going to get pressure on the quarterback. We did get pressure on the quarterback. Uh, the young man did a nice job of getting rid of the football on time. But I think the offense and defensive line played with very, very good effort against some very, very talented players. And, uh, you know, we were able to answer the bell and, and be talented enough to be able to win the game at the end. But uh, nothing overall changed. Uh, very pleased with their effort. Probably the most pleasing thing is, is just you just got to keep on grinding. You know, you you got to grind when things aren't good. You got to grind, and when they're good, you got to grind. And you did a nice. They they both of those fronts did a nice job of just keeping in the fight. And uh, you know, we overtook the fourth quarter. And if you look at the numbers, you know, we uh, we were able to pretty much dominate the fourth quarter. And a lot of that had to do with the offensive line, and a lot of that had to do with the uh, with the uh, defensive front. Do you find it ironic that the three games where you got up to a bad start at three games you won? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had that question. I didn't even think about it until it was brought up to me really after the game. But, um, you know, I don't know. Every football game, again, has a different personality, and I don't really have an answer for that. I think that it shows some toughness with the kids and gets you back up against the wall. But, again, it, it, at the end, it goes back to real simple. I mean, we've been five games we've lost. We've had an opportunity to win all five games. Um, and... You know, could we take some things back? Coaches aren't perfect, but yeah, you got to make plays, and uh, we were able to do we were able to do that in this game, and that was the difference. So I don't, I didn't see a great difference. Uh, uh, again, in attitude, it was a great attitude. I thought we had a good attitude going in. I think at halftime, there was some challenging that went on. There were some young men that didn't play anymore because they weren't ready for that fight. And if you're not ready for it, and we sense it, then you're not going to play. And I think this program is is understanding that. But uh, I, I don't see. Uh, I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't have the direct correlation between getting behind. If it was, I guess we should probably let them receive the ball every time and just lay down on the kickoff and go down seven nothing. I don't know, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> you're a goal wise. You thought you were talking about obviously all game, uh, you know, and things like that. But part of that was showing you could beat. Nevada, Fresno, or Hawaii, yep. and to do it on the road against one of those teams has to be big. It was huge. Uh, it absolutely was, and it was. Uh, it's a main goal of the of the program from my standpoint as, as the head football coach is to you got to chase the best, and if we're not interested in chasing the best, then. I'm not interested in being the head coach, and that's the way we'll do it for everything that we do. We'll try to be the best, whether it has to do with academics or our social environment or on the athletic football field. And, you know, we're, we're, uh, we made some strides this week to be able to get that done, so that was definitely a, a big step in the right direction. What about Stanley Morris and the, the special teams player of the week? <laughs> yeah. Five receiver. Yeah, yeah, a couple fake punts. And uh, it was, we've had that in for a while. Uh, Stanley can kick the ball. 
And it's an either-or scenario in that situation. And Hawaii, as soon as they signed back there, they backed off into a heavy safe look, which you know we would expect. We wouldn't expect a big rush with Stanley Morrison standing back there. And as many fakes as we've run over the years, and uh, you know people are always on guard, and they have to prepare uh, for us. And the situation is running some fakes in, in abnormal spots and in, in times when you wouldn't expect them. And Stanley did a nice job on the first one. His wide receiver skills came in. Uh, it was kind of like I guess I've. I've saw it and it looked just like a tunnel screen to me. It's like he caught a ball cutting across the back side of the field and he saw the pursuit all going away from him when he ran that way and he cut it back and that was a uh, very clean and uh, play for him to be able to see and go make. And the second one, you know, not a great throw. Uh, Stanley would like to have that one back. He put it up a little bit high. Bobby was wide open. They covered Bobby on the first one. Second one, they lost Bobby and uh, he was open and fortunately uh, we work on that tip drill every single day in practice and we run that fake and we were able to get it done. I'm just kidding. We don't practice the team drill. So. But uh, it was good. It, was, it worked out. At the end of the day, players make plays, players win games. Yes. Yeah. What's that? Adam Kennedy change the way your offense operates, if any? And then on the opposing side, how does his long ball threat change the way defenses defend you? Well, I think Chucky can throw the long ball too. I, I really do. I think he can make those same throws that Adam made in that game. And, um, you know, I think as, as we move forward and uh, we have those players that can make those plays, and it was something that we talked about for the, the two weeks of the bye week is to get the ball down the field and give kids a chance to make a play. You throw a jump ball to Matt Austin, you know, he had a chance to make two in this game. He made the one. The other one was a tremendous play by the DB by, uh, by Hawaii. He did a great job of getting his hands and knocking that ball out. And the other balls that went down the field did a nice job. So, uh, you know, the opportunities for Chucky to throw it is there. Adam uh, can throw that ball. You know, the thing that Adam brings is is Adam is, is is big. Adam is a big young man when he's back there. They came off the edge on the one, uh, uh, the, the sack of the defensive end. Made it, he made it, they did a nice job. The kid from Hawaii came off the edge and came off really clean off the edge and hit Adam, and it was just kind of like he, I saw him coming off the edge and kind of cringing and watch out the ball, but he kind of hits Adam, and Adam just kind of falls to the ground and, whatever you know and because uh, he is so big and physical and the other thing with adam is is his ability to to run the ball if he falls falls forward he's going to get two yards and that's a positive but he is uh he can move around out there he's not just a guy that's going to stand there and you know he expects himself to be able to run the football and then he proved that he can in this game and he makes good decisions and you know when you get a big quarterback back there it, uh, it makes a little bit of a difference than uh, you know chucky sometimes get hits and looks like he's going to flop around out there sometimes, but uh, uh, he's Adams, uh, obviously much bigger. So they're, they're both good quarterbacks, and I felt good about when we both recruited them. Who would be the backup, and how ready would they be? Well, that's a little bit of a question mark uh, as we go through. You know, we'll have to see, um, but they'll, be, they'll have to be ready this week. So, you know, the two young men we have in the program will both uh, – Take a shot at it and see where they where they go, but uh, it just depends. You know, I don't know. It's a lot of we got to get Chucky back here first and see where he sits. Uh, you know, if you talk to Chucky right now, Chucky probably says I'm starting on Saturday. So we got to see what happens with what that goes. But uh, the the backup will be ready if if needed. And to to my knowledge, right now Chucky's not out of it to be the backup or possibly be the starter next week by any stretch of imagination. When I talked to him last night, it was, you know, he'll be uh, he'll be chomping at the bit if I know Chucky. So we'll have to see how that goes in the next 48 hours. We'll have to make a decision on that obviously by probably tomorrow afternoon though. Is this is this win more emotional for your Polynesian athletes? No question. You know, they were the captains. Um, you know, this year we've done a little bit different on the captain thing, which I'll continue in the future. Is it's captain by week, and it's a group of kids by week. Yeah, we go to Fresno. It's the kids that are in California are going to be the captains, and we'll bring out 13 of them if we need to, and let four kids walk out. And this week it was all the Polynesian kids that were on the trip, and they were able to walk out. And you know, for Tavita to be able to win, and, and Hawaii, Brian Sweet wasn't there, Elvis wasn't there with us, but uh, for them to be able to get that win is big, and it's big for us in recruiting. And and I'm not necessarily saying to go on head to head with Hawaii or what have you, but you know, Polynesian kids are going to watch that game. Polynesian kids understand the culture that we're trying to build, and for us to be able to get into that environment and be able to play and be able to win is is big for us in, in recruiting, and it, and it does make a difference because uh, it's it's against a really good, physical, tough football team, Hawaii is, and um, when you can do that, it, it will help us in the future, I believe, with uh, recruiting Polynesian kids. You said some very nice things about your team and their performance in your opening statement, and mm -hmm. they were warranted. It doesn't mean a thing now. I guess San Jose State, as mm -hmm. far as I can tell. What did I say? I can't remember. It's a great win. <laughs> okay. okay. But, I All mean, right. really, it's yeah. a great win, but it's another game. Yeah. Or you have to continue.
Yeah. Well, I can't say it doesn't mean anything. It means a ton. You know, I mean, if uh, regardless of what takes place for the rest of the season, it was it accomplished some goals that uh, off of Al's question, it no question accomplishes goals. But to be a consistent program, yes. I mean, you have to be able to put wins back to back or you're never going to take the next step. You can't win every other game. You can't win a game every third week. You can't. I mean, that's not that's not what it's all about. But, uh, you know, it's uh, to sit back and and uh, keep challenging the kids and let them understand where they have to go and what they've got to do to be able to develop. But uh, right now they're sitting at three and five. Uh, we're not where we thought we were going to be, and we're not happy about where we sit, but we are where we are. And uh, But there's still a ton to play for with four games left. We've been in every football game, which is uh, uh, a great credit to the kids. And, you know, I, I guess I, you know, sit back. And, again, Coach Mills, he, he addressed the team. And uh, I've leaned a lot on what he said and, and uh, what he said to us at the – to the team, not to me, to, to the whole group was, you know, you're, you're, you're becoming a program. And those words struck me uh, in, in, a, in a lot of ways, in a lot of good ways, in a lot of negative ways, I guess, in my own mind. But uh, he said, I watched you all year long and you're becoming a program. But a program wins week in and week out. They find a way to be able to string wins together. A program is a, we want a winning program. But we've, we've gained respect from a physicality standpoint. I think we've gained respect. To, we can play with anybody. But you're exactly right when you make the statement that uh, you know you, you you need to go out and win again, which uh, we will. And this is a good football team we're playing now. And as we've talked for weeks in and weeks out now, this league, it's uh, you know it's it's good teams every week, and uh, that's a credit to the coaches and the players in the league. What do you see from the Spartans? Uh, you know, I see a football team that's a, a lot like us. You know what they've what they've done and uh, tried to be able to. I think they've done a nice job of uh, improving their. Uh, Recruiting and the athletes that are running around on the field are, are quality young men. Uh, I think they're well coached. I think the coach take coaches take advantage of uh, what they do well, and uh, what they don't think they do so well probably doesn't show up a lot on film because they're they are good coaches and they've they've been in football games. They've played with a number of people very very uh, well uh, at a high level, and they come out and and they move around every week offensively. Uh, they have some talent. A quarterback that I think that manages the game very well does a nice job of throwing the ball and uh, quality running back. I apologize for not knowing names, but I'm about you know 12 hours behind where I usually am on game planning right now, so I don't have a bunch of those names. But uh, uh, their uh, receivers are doing a nice job of getting the ball in their hands. 89 keeps catching my eye when I watch film on him. The tight end is a very talented young man. I believe his name is Otten, if I have that right. Uh, Big, tall, physical kid that uh, runs very well, and uh, the the running back is very solid. Offensive line wise, I think that the left tackle is is very good. Uh, from what I see, I, I like him uh, a lot. He'll be uh, he'll be a lot for us to handle, and uh, the rest of the offensive line is very solid. Defensively, I believe they're coached very well. Um, I think Coach Bear's done this for a number of years, and uh, he knows exactly what he's doing on the defensive side of the football. So, uh, tremendous, tremendous linebacking crew. Uh, Thirty one Smith. Yeah. Is uh, was a very talented player a year ago. Obviously, he continues to be 43. Don't know his name. The defensive end, uh, very very good football player. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's a very talented young man and uh, plays with an unbelievably high motor. So, um, and then the obviously the safety is one of the best in the country. Uh, number two. Yeah, yeah. He's he's special. So they're it is a solid uh, solid solid football team and. You know, we'll. Uh, I believe both coaching staffs will say the same thing. We're gonna we're gonna have our hands full on both sides, and it's gonna be a very competitive game. And um, you know, we need to we need to take advantage of opportunity, opportunity knocks. The one thing I would say about our, uh, the football game that we had, you know, special teams wise, I thought was uh, our, our kicking was poor and unacceptable. So we need to we need to be better uh, in that area, and uh, we need to toughen up, uh, become much better, cleaner. You start to think about. Whip kicking or trying to figure out some way to kick the ball further downfield, low, but you know what I mean yeah. on the ground. Yeah, we're gonna think we're gonna think about a lot of things, but uh, you know I think the uh, uh, bottom line is we have kids that can do it and they're not. So uh, that goes back to a lot of different levels, and it's just, it's not uh, it's not acceptable. And you know if I look back at one part of the team, and uh, it's time to you know throw down the gauntlet a little bit, and uh, the kids on the team are gonna do it. And uh, so are we as a coaching staff, but uh, we're at the point to where that can't, it just, it just can't be acceptable when things are there and, you know, the things are, you know, you're kicking the ball off, we got to kick the ball off and, you know, we got to punt the ball well. Um, and I'm not a stat guy, so I don't care what the numbers are. It doesn't matter to me. It's, it's production, where you're at, uh, how people are going to take advantage of you. We've kicked the ball left all year long on our punts. 
they put two returners back, they put one short to the left and one deep in the middle, and what does it do? We punt the ball right to him. Uh, you know, so it's uh, it, there's nothing there's there's nothing else to do. The other ten guys on the field at that point can't do anything. And if you're covering a kickoff and you're catching the ball with the kids running down on the 45 yard line, those kids on the kickoff team have no chance. I mean, they have no chance to stop that ball from coming out unless somebody makes a remarkable play. So it's an 11 man sport. Everybody needs to be accountable, and we've got to improve in that area. If, uh, or it will cost us a football game in the next four for sure. I promise you. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a pat on the back. Robert Turbin? Yeah. Nor should it have been. It yeah. was uh, yeah. pretty yep. <laughs> yep. I and you know, I, and again I go back to it. That is it's great to see. It's great to see young men challenging young men. And uh they're doing it in a productive way. Uh, you know, and, and but it is we're all in this together and uh, that's it's it's tremendous to see and there was there was uh, some more of that, that I've seen in the last three weeks with this football team that uh, is going to challenge young men to either step up or, or maybe it becomes way too hard for them. And if that's the case, then that's great. I, I got a release paper on my desk. I'll be happy to sign. What makes um, well, Grigsby tough to defend? He had a big game against you guys last year. He's having a big year this year, it seems like. Yeah, he's he's, he's a very talented kid. Um, he's a well-rounded, very good athlete. I think they use him well. Uh, Within the scheme, and uh, you've got to, you know, you've got to be able to, you got to know where he is every single snap. And you know, as, as we continue to game plan, you, you have to look and see what you want to take advantage of, and, and what their what their positives are. But uh, obviously, he's he's a talented kid. But I think he's surrounded by, you know, some other young men that, that don't give you the opportunity to, you know, completely take him away. So I just see a football team that. Uh, this is our third time being able to play him, and I see a football team that continues to um, understand the game of football in, in San Jose, and um, and they're more talented. You know, Coach Tomey did a tremendous job while he was there, obviously, and had some great success. And uh, but now I see him fitting into their scheme uh, a little bit more for for the changes in the staff, and and that stuff just takes place. And uh, but they've they've got some nice young talent on that football team. Bo.J. Filimuatu, who will uh, recap the Hawaii win and preview San Jose State, and then take a few questions. Uh, the Hawaii game was a tremendous win for our team, um, especially for our defense to step up like that in the fourth quarter. Uh, we always laid off uh, towards the end, and it was just a great win for our defense. Uh, off the uh, offensive side, uh, Adam Kennedy stepped up, man, and took the game in his own hands. He won it for us. Robert Turbin with that last touchdown. I mean, it just felt great to, to be part of this team as a unit, as a family. Uh, our upcoming opponent is San Jose. Matt Faulkner is a, a good friend of mine. We played junior college together, uh, the quarterback. Um, he has a few flaws as well, but, you know, he knows a few flaws as me as well. As, so uh, it would be, be good to compete against him. Um, I know that the offensive line struggles sometimes on pass rush, and we have to take advantage of that. Uh, other than that, that's all I know so far. I haven't really watched the film yet. So he was with you junior college, so you want to have a lot of meetings. Yes, Saturday, right? yes, sir. I, I, I want to get in his face a little bit and just talk nice words to him when he's on the floor, I guess. And <laughs> hopefully, uh, I reunite with him in the backfield. So, do you still talk to him? Uh, I haven't talked to him since uh, last he came and visit uh, my game last year when I was at uh, Mount Sac, and he just talked then. And uh, they were recruiting me as well, and he just told me a few words and. I know he he always uh he always uh, gives up my coach uh, Yona a call back at home and I know Coach Yona's gonna give me a, a phone call pretty soon and tell me about what Matt's gonna do and this and that. What well, uh, tell us a little bit about this culture of having more Polynesian guys and how you feel together with this team and and this game you could tell it was you guys that led the way down to the other end at the end of the game and you, and you guys were all kind of hanging and having a fun time on this trip and I mean talk a little bit about that, Bo yeah, being being in Hawaii, that was my first time in Hawaii. Just being first time in the island, actually, and uh, it just felt I mean, it's just a, like a natural habitat for us. You know, it felt great. You know, you can breathe better, and and uh, just to have all of us together like that, it, it felt it felt tremendous. Man, it, it was just it was beautiful. And uh, when when we stepped on the field, all of us polys as a captain, it, it, you look to side to side and you see each other there. It just it makes it makes Utah State even better just to have a. Uh, a guy who, who grew up in the same culture as you, and uh, and grew up in the same ways as as you did. So, but talk about how how Coach Anderson's been able to get all of you guys together. I mean, he he's 
he's kind of been adopted a little yeah. bit by you guys, hasn't he? Is that the best way to put it? Or? Uh, actually, he he. And we look at him as a Polynesian as well. I mean, he, he always tells us stuff. And uh, when I came here on my recruiting trip, he he, he was most the most uh, truthful about everything uh, out of all the coaches that I've been recruited by. And uh, when uh, Al Apuajo and uh, committed here, that was like the the signal just to just to commit already. You know, and and having the rest of the Polys here just it, I, I can't explain it. It's like we have a pact of brotherhood that you just you just like, you know. Because you and Al were high school teammates. Yeah, we're high school teammates. He's always been a little brother of mine, or a little sister of mine, you could say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but having him here is, is just having another little brother here. So I get the feeling watching your style, if you can't get out and go a little bit with pass rush, or you, you're just constantly getting blocked at the line, or done, that's it, that can really put you down. I mean, you've yeah. got to be a motor guy, or you've got to be an energy guy. So. <laughs> How do you keep this up now? And I mean, at the first half, you were running after Moniz, and he'd run by you or go the other side. Yeah. You'd try to grab him, and you couldn't. But how do you keep that going? Uh, I just I, I like being loose. Uh, like I like being the five technique, and Coach Jay knows that. But in the scheme of our defense, it, it, for me to play the B gap, that's what we do, and we play the run mostly. But uh, he helped me a lot with this the scheme last week, and he let me just be, do what I want, and uh, let me just long stick when to hit the A gap or be in the fight take and rush off the edge. So I, I follow what Coach A says, and I, look where they won. They won us the game. So, but you are telling him to recruit more defensive ends for next year, so you can move to the linebacker. Right. Uh, it's whatever Coach A wants. Yeah, whatever he's a big man says. So I, I hope that he does, so I can move. But if he if he wants me to stay, then I'll stay at the position. I don't know what you heard of, when, of, of what he said, but he, he talked about guys calling out teammates. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that happening these days with the Aggie football team. Yeah, to Louisiana Tech when we lost. Uh, we looked at each other in the mirror, and then there's a lot of blaming going on on this team. But uh, we came in as a, a team meeting with no coaches there, and we, we talked to each other about everything. And it looked like we were turning the program. We came Monday, it came around practice, and you could see everybody was fired up. And then the whole week, the whole bye week, everybody was just locked and loaded. You know? And then we came in at halftime, we were down 28 to 7, and then. Uh, it was quiet, you know, the whole locker room was quiet. And then our coaches came in and, you know, gave us an earful. But it was just embarrassing, you know, just how, how we performed as a defense, as a unit, you know. And uh, when uh, Coach Bush uh, got into our face, you know, we, we didn't like it. But we came and reacted like we're brothers, you know. And then we looked each other in the eye and then it was enough talk, you know. Talk is cheap, you know. We could say that we're a good team, but how about we just be about it. And we came in the second half and I think we showed character that, you can never back down from a fight. Are you as comfortable in this scheme of defense as you've ever been up to this point? I mean, do you feel more confident now with the scheme than you've been all year long? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, we, we, our defense now is that they like to move our defense line and move around just a few more, you know, instead of just being the B gap and playing that. Uh, Coach A gives us more freeway, like, just to do whatever we want. And, uh, just rush, rush off the edge if we could, or take the B gap if we want. And uh, I, I love it now. I'm starting to get adapt to it now, so be well off for me. Has the physical part of a guy coming right at you, running, blocking, that been the hardest part of this then? Yeah, the hardest part has been the the four eye, where you, where we have to just sit there and just wait for whatever the play goes. Because if we pop a gap, then the uh, then the They'll run straight in the hole, so our D-line has to be patient and has to be uh, uh, disciplined to sit there.